guys welcome back to my channel so i've been going a little bit diy crazy over the last few days hopefully by now you would have checked out my hallway transformation still really really happy with that but i had a few little things around the house that i wanted to kind of create into something or change up a little bit so i thought i would share them with you um yeah and hopefully give you guys any ideas inspiration a little home decor upcycle bits that you could be doing if you're looking for a little something to do as like a weekend project or something like that maybe so a couple of the things are things that i already had um but a lot of the stuff that i actually bought was stuff that i just ordered online so obviously it's still accessible to you guys if you did want to do something similar but yeah just a few little ideas um little weekendy projects that i've quite enjoyed doing hopefully you guys like them so check them out and let me know what you think so the first thing that i wanted to upcycle was this lamp i bought it years and years and years ago when i was renting um and it was really really cheap to be honest i do like this kind of tripod style base but the chrome doesn't fit in with our house anymore and the lampshade is very very cheap it's very frayed falling apart and again the color just doesn't really match anything that we have going on so my idea for the lampshade was to basically wrap it in macrame um so i've said this before i'm trying to add more kind of like texture um brighten things up this is going to live in our lounge which is very kind of black and gray at the moment so i wanted to add in a little bit more light tones um so i was going to wrap the whole lampshade in macrame i did this by literally just wrapping it around tying a knot and then just keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping it looping it in and out which takes forever but I got there eventually. The one tip I would say is you have to kind of strike a balance between keeping the macrame cord tight, but making sure it's not too tight. I actually wrapped mine too tight and you'll probably see in the end product that I kind of crippled the lampshade a little bit. It was kind of like buckling and went a bit of a weird shape. So you want to keep it nice and taut, but not so tight that it's going to crush the actual structure of the lampshade itself. But with this, it's very just trial and error. You can go along and just sort of tighten things, loosen things, move things around a lot. So don't worry about getting it perfect. And I think this is the kind of thing that it looks fine if it's not perfect anyway. And then I just finished it off by knotting it in the same place I knotted it to begin with. And this was the final result of the lampshade. Then I moved on to the actual base of the lamp. So I wrapped up any bits of electrical stuff that I did not want to get dirty or sprayed because I was gonna spray the base of it a matte black. I'll leave a link below for the actual spray that I use because I use it on everything and I absolutely love it. So I was just giving it a once over with this spray paint. And this is the final result. So I feel like, yeah, just having the black, the matte black base on it, just makes it a lot more modern, it looks more expensive, just fits in so much better with what we have going on in our lounge and having the kind of macrame cord lampshade just lightens it up as well. So the next thing I wanted to create was a bowl holder for Rocky's food and water. This is his current setup and he pushes them around everywhere and it just looks really messy. So I got this pot of concrete on Amazon. This cost £8.49 for the whole tub. Um, and yeah, I wanted to just create a kind of concrete stand, something that looked a little bit more modern, a little bit more tidy. Rocky's trying to get involved because he thinks it's food. Um, so it's really simple to use, it has all the instructions on the background, it tells you what ratio to mix up. Um, so I was just mixing a bit of the powder with a little bit of water, stirring it round until it was a nice kind of smooth consistency. I 
I then took the concrete and I poured it into this baking tray. So this is a really disgusting old baking tray that we were gonna get rid of anyway. Um, so I just poured it in and kind of moved it around and tried to spread it, but I soon realized I didn't have enough. So I mixed up a little bit more of the kind of concrete powder with some water and added that on top of what I'd already poured into the tray. This time I made sure that I kind of pushed a lot of it more into like the corners where it didn't spread before. And then I just gave it a really good shake and it levels out really easily. So it's so easy to use. And then another tip that I've heard before is that you should kind of like tap it to get rid of any little air bubbles. So to do the actual bowl holders, I got these two little plastic pots and then I literally just laid them down and then pressed them into the concrete and left them there. Um, these aren't, the, I don't have the right size bowls at the moment. I need to like get some at some point, but these will do for now. Um, so yeah, I just put that to one side, let that set and I had a bit of powder left over. So I decided to do another little project. I had one of these mushroom containers and I thought the bottom of it was really, really pretty. So I thought rather than just putting it in the recycling, why not reuse it for something else? So with the remainder of the um, concrete mix that I had left, I literally just poured it into this mushroom container. Did the same thing where I kind of like spread it out, shook it, tapped it to get rid of any air bubbles and just left that to set as well. So for both of these projects, I used that whole tub. So that was like £8.50 for two projects, basically. So I left both of them just to kind of set overnight. I'm not sure how long I meant to leave them, but that was enough time. The next day I just popped them out of the moulds and then I put these little kind of felt um, chair feet covers on the bottom, I just had them spare. I thought the tray was perfect to put a candle on and this is Rocky's bowl holder. These bowls aren't the right size, like I said I need to get some different bowls to actually fit it, but just to show you what it looks like. So I'm really happy with the outcome, of course you can kind of like paint them, spray them, do whatever you want with them, but I personally actually quite like the um, kind of rough concrete effect anyway. And this was Rocky trying out his bowls for the first time. He actually really, really liked them. And it's, it's just great because it keeps them still and it keeps them in one place. He can't push them around like he does his other ones. So yeah, it looks far more tidy, far more stylish than what we had previously. Okay, so you guys may remember I did a um, charity shop haul not that long ago and I picked up these massive curtains and I absolutely love this fabric. So I thought, why not turn these into cushions? And I thought to start with, I was gonna do a floor cushion for Rocky to sit on. So all I did is I just measured out how big I wanted the cushion and then I just cut out two pieces of fabric which were exactly the same style. I tried to make sure the pattern was the same on both of them as well. So these are my two bits of fabric. You can obviously do whatever size you want. Um, but just make sure you've got two which are exactly the same size. And then you want to make sure that the pattern of the fabric is kind of on the inside. So it's like it's inside out. And then I used a sewing machine to stitch the sides together. I haven't really got into any detail with this because this was my first time using a sewing machine. I had no idea what I was doing. I very much winged it and I don't feel like I'm in the position where I can advise you guys how to use a sewing machine. I thought it would be like a press and go kind of situation it is not um so yeah i basically just stitched each of the sides of these um kind of fabric squares together and then i actually left a gap so once you have done that you can trim the corners off this helps the corners of the pillow sit a little bit better And the reason you need to leave a gap is because you now need to turn your pillow the right way round. So you stitch it inside out and then flip it out the correct way. 
so I left a gap which was just a few inches maybe like four inches so I could just um, flip it around like this and then just take a little bit of time to kind of rearrange your fabric make sure you're popping all of the corners out and obviously with this if you have a cushion already that you just want to create a cover for you can obviously make the dimensions the exact same as the cushion I had a spare pillow um, and it was one that was really really old we weren't going to use it so I actually ended up just taking the stuffing out of this pillow and putting it into my new cushion cover and the reason that I didn't just keep the stuffing inside the existing pillow is because it wasn't exactly the right kind of size that I wanted I wanted something that was a bit more square than rectangular so I basically spent ages stuffing it, making sure all the stuffing was evenly spread, it was out in the corners, giving it a good fluff up and making sure the cushion cover was completely filled. And once that's all done, you can start by sewing up that kind of gap that you left to turn the cushion cover inside out and stuff it so i've just gone through and done like a running stitch by hand um, just to seal that hole up Once that was done, I was really happy with it, but I felt like it needed a little something else. So I decided to create some tassels to add on, and I only created two to add on to the front corners. So I use my macrame cord that I showed you guys earlier on my lamp, and you wanna get a kind of um, square object or maybe like a piece of card or something. I just used a coaster, and you just wrap your macrame cord round and round and round, and it's completely up to you how much you wrap around it just depends how big you want your tassels how full you want them so i just kept on wrapping until i was happy and then you're going to cut it off at the very end like that and then you're just going to want to slide the cord off of your kind of template or coaster whatever you've used so you should have lots of loops like this try and keep them separated like that it's really really difficult but then you're going to want to take another little bit of macrame cord pull it through the middle and then knot it on the top to kind of keep all of these loops together i knotted this about three times then once it was knotted i trimmed off any excess and then you can kind of um, scooch the little knot around so it sits inside those loops so you won't even see it I then took another bit of cord, which you're gonna kind of wrap around the whole loopy thing itself, because this is what's gonna create your kind of like little ball ball at the top and keep everything together. Again, once you've wrapped that round, it completely depends how many times you want it to wrap around, how bulky you want it, if you want it a bit more delicate, but you need to knot that again as well, trim off any excess, and the same thing as before, you can kind of um, move the cord around and you can hide that knot under other bits of cord so that you won't see it. So that is what it should look like. And then this is where you take all of your loops and you're going to cut through them. This is when it starts to kind of take shape and look more like a tassel rather than like a little squid. Uh, so yeah, I was cutting through all of them and you can obviously trim them, make them a bit shorter, even them out, whatever you want to do. And this is your final little tassel so you can just play around with it and kind of like fluff it up and readjust things a little bit 
So I just attached those to the two front corners of this floor cushion, um, just to give it a little something extra. So I just hand sewed those on. And this was the final product. I absolutely love this fabric and I think it goes perfectly with the little macrame cords as well. I was so lucky to find this in the charity shop. So all of that material cost me, I think it was eight pounds for two huge curtains, which I'm gonna do a few more projects with, a couple more cushions for my sofa and potentially up re-upholster a chair as well. But Rocky absolutely loves this little floor cushion. It's just a perfect little place for him to perch when he wants a little nap. And last but not least, I have had this bookcase for so long. It used to be in my bedroom at my parents' house when I was younger. And it's this kind of like wood veneer, which I'm not really a fan of and it's really beaten up as well. So I started by just giving this a lick of paint. This is the same paint that I used for my front door in my um, hallway transformation. So I'll leave as much link down below as possible, but I gave this two coats of this paint and it's a eggshell black paint, just to make it a little bit more modern and also hide all of those kind of scuffs and marks that it had from years and years of wear. This is my favourite kind of project to do though. I always love looking on Gumtree, which I know isn't feasible at the moment, but this is something I literally just had sat in my garage. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to be able to give it a little facelift. So this is what it was looking like when it was all dry. As you can see, the back panel of it has not been painted. I will show you guys why. But I also had this vase as well with this dry grass that I picked the other day. Um, and I wanted to do a little something with that as well. So I've noticed there's a lot of this kind of rattan cane style stuff going around. So I wanted to do something um, in that kind of style. I did look at getting some rolls of um, kind of like woven cane, but it was quite expensive. So I actually ended up looking on Amazon and finding these and they're actually bamboo placemats, um, which were £8.54 for four placemats. And all I did was cut them into size. I did film more of this before, but my camera cut it off for some annoying reason. So I cut these cane placemats down to size. Um, I had this no nails wood glue um, from a previous project and I ended up just gluing these to that back panel of the bookcase. And all I did was literally push it down into place, add some kind of heavy books on top to make sure it was kind of held down while it was drying. And this glue is great because it does dry clear as well. So you don't need to worry too much about it. You can also use a hot glue gun, um, which dries pretty much instantly, but I didn't have enough glue for my glue gun. So that is why I use the wood glue instead. While those were setting, I moved on to this vase. So this is some long grass I picked the other day when I was on a walk and I absolutely love it, but I don't really like this kind of pink vase. And it's a really annoying shape vase for a lot of stuff, except for this long grass. So I had a spare placemat and I wanted to wrap this vase in that kind of bamboo effect as well. So I just placed it around and then found the point at what I thought would be a really good height. And then I ended up just trimming it down to the correct height. So as you can see, it's just a little bit taller than the vase itself. I thought that the bamboo mat and the kind of light grass effect would be too much. So I decided to go in with a bit more of that paint that I used earlier and actually paint this bamboo mat as well. So once it was dry, I went in with my hot glue gun. I have just glued down one strip of it here, placing it on the vase and kind of 
pressing it in and letting it dry onto the vase. And then all I did was just go around um, kind of in different sections and just do a little bit of glue at a time and wrap it around the whole vase. Once that was all wrapped and the glue was all set, I decided to give it another lick of paint because where it was laid flat, it was painted fine, but as soon as I wrapped it, you could see a few more kind of cracks and stuff come through. But this is the final product. Really, really happy. Um, it's turned out so well. The vase is still a little bit wet in this. That's why it looks a bit shiny, but this is just like a perfect way to kind of upcycle um, any kind of like bookshelf, bookcase, really, really cheap. And obviously you can customize it to whatever you want as well. Right, and that is everything. I hope you guys have enjoyed um, those little kind of like home decor upcycle bits that I just showed you guys. If you have, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upcoming video. And until next time, I will see you guys later.